In this episode, we'll explore being a voyant manifester, or more popularly known as clairvoyant, to see if you have this intuitive skill or the potential for it. The voyant style is part of the Teva Savara aptitudes or superpowers that feature in the award-winning visionary fantasy Heliotropus and the five main aptitudes of tangent, accrevent, voyant, audient, and sentient, or Tavis for short, is a system to identify your extrasensory and sensory strengths and weaknesses. And there's a quick quiz you can do to find out your dominant style. Just go to goldenagetimeline.com and you'll see the quiz at the top of the page there. So in the last two episodes, we talked about the tangent manifester and then the accrevent manifester style. And today we'll focus on the voyant manifester or aptitude. So these five Tavis manifestation styles are like the box of tools you use when manifesting your reality and are similar to the five clairs, as in clairtangent, claircrevent, clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient. They are like learning styles as well, such as the VARC system of auditory, kinesthetic, reading, writing, visual, and the added emotional feeling style of learning. And we use all these sensory, extrasensory learning and manifestation aptitudes anyway. So the Tavis system just helps you name and identify and become more comfortable with these abilities that we all have latent or manifest. So how to recognize voyant activities. They tend to dress well and are often seen watching movies, looking at images, drawing diagrams, observing the visual details of a place, person, or thing. Words they tend to use more often than the other styles. I see, I can picture that, see you later. <laughs> Greetings, maybe a more formal handshake with direct eye contact. So think about if any of that is true for you or people you know. Now, the best way for Voyant to learn is by seeing images. They appreciate videos with lots of images or slideshows with images, symbols, and diagrams. And by creating images. They may like to draw or use symbols for taking notes. For example, using mind maps to take notes or creating diagrams of what they just learned. Regular sensory perception advantages of the voyant are they have high aesthetic intelligence, visually perceptive of vivid imagination, good sense of direction, good facial recognition. You know, the types whose home is orderly and visually pleasing rather than cluttered. They take care of their own appearance with more detail than other styles and notice visual details that others miss. Now, the disadvantages in extreme types, meaning they aren't well balanced with the other styles, is that they may be overly perfectionistic about themselves and others. They may come across as cold and insensitive, lacking empathy for others, more interested in order and goals. So think about yourself or people you know who might fit this description. Now, the extrasensory perception of a voyant is often they have a very active dream life full of vivid visuals. They might be able to do lucid dreaming where they are conscious that they're dreaming and can direct the dream. They can perceive the visuals of events in the future, like being a fortune teller, seeing possibilities playing out in the future using a tool like a crystal ball or tarot cards. Or in ancient worlds, they would be called a prophet. You may have heard of the Oracle of Delphi, for example. So think about that for yourself. Have you ever seen an image of someone in your mind's eye, someone you hadn't seen in a while, and then bump into them or receive a message from them? And the best way to manifest as a voyant is to imagine being there visually. Like if you wanted to manifest a trip to Hawaii, imagine the sights, sunsets, palm trees, ocean. <laughs> Draw a picture or create a vision board. Create images of Hawaii or find images and put them up where you'll see them regularly. Now, the types of professions where you see a lot of voyance 
Anything, of course, to do with visuals, like a painter, interior designer, graphic designer, photographer, videographer, cinematographer, fashion expert, hairdresser, makeup artist, engineer, architect, biochemist, pilot, air traffic controller, and so on. So think about the types of professions, jobs, or careers you've chosen and what it says about your learning and manifestation style. Why it's useful to know your personality style, if you're a tangent, accrevent, voyant, audient, or sentient manifester, is it helps you use your natural inclinations more constructively. We all use our senses, imagination, and attention to manifest anyway, but sometimes not very effectively, and sometimes for things we don't actually want. I had one coaching client who turned out to be a voyant manifester, and she was listening to affirmations, which can be helpful if you're also strong as an audience manifester. But if you're very strong as a voyant, it's better to do a mind map where you create a colorful visual map of your goal or vision board. I had another client, and I helped her figure out she was a voyant, but she was a fitness instructor at the time, which is a great profession for a tangent manifester, but for her, it wasn't the right fit. When she switched to graphic facilitator, everything felt right. Maybe you've been at events where they have graphic facilitators who visually capture what happened at a conference. Now she travels around doing that and also teaches the skill. Now, like it in the last episode, sometimes it's useful to look at stories, popular shows, and well-known characters to illustrate the differences between the types. I used to write comedy and so studied some of the most popular sitcoms to understand characters. Most hit comedy shows tend to put four to five vastly different characters together to help create the comedy. So let's take the popular show Ted Lasso to illustrate in case you've seen it. There's Roy, who's a typical tangent, a strong athlete, intense physical presence, very grounded, sometimes an aggressive nature. You have Coach Beard, who's more like the accrevent. He's quiet, thoughtful, a bit eccentric. Keeley is more the voyant as the social media expert and is always dressed to the nines in unique outfits, very visual. Rebecca is more the audience, fiery, passionate, and an amazing singer. And finally, Ted Lasso himself, who is more the sentient, very emotionally sensitive, caring, supportive of others. And as I said, it's often enjoyable to learn about things like this in story form. So in the novel Heliotropus, the main character of Haddon is voyant action on the Tavis Afara scale, which is also known as the eagle eye, which makes him a clairvoyant able to remote view and gather visual intel from remote locations. He also has a photographic memory, which is something a clairvoyant is more easily able to develop. Using his aptitude as a weapon, he can shape shift to create visual illusions as necessary. Of course, in the novel, in Subterranean Earth, people have etheric wings that allow them to fly, and they usually have an animal companion known as a genio, and in his case, it's an eagle. Daphne is a side character in Heliotropus as well, and she is Hadna's long lost mate. She is also a voyant, but her nuance is the magician or voyant reprogram used in an empowering way. She can also remote view, and she can also shape shift to create visual illusions as necessary. And with her nuance, she can use her mind to camouflage, say an entire spaceship or building. Used as a weapon, she can trick people with visual illusions also. Her genio is a blue jay. And if you're into buying, collecting, and selling NFTs, you can get an NFT of these characters and several others from the book Heliotropus on Mint Fun and several other platforms. So I'll put a link below for that as well. So as a reminder, you can get this Tavis Aptitudes ebook, and then you'll get a lot more detail about the different styles. Just look for the link below to try the 60 second quiz. And if you'd like to know a bit more about Heliotropus, stay for a short book trailer. Thanks for listening. In a world where love, time travel, and psychic powers converge, prepare to embark on an extraordinary journey. The second edition of the captivating science fiction and epic fantasy novel Heliotrope Es is now here 
book one of the Timeline Redemption series. Tia Violetta's life is about to unravel as she approaches her 30th birthday. Secluded in a Seattle mansion, protected by her paranoid father, she remains unaware of her true heritage and the looming threat to herself and all of humanity. Little does she know, Tia holds the key to something extraordinary, something that the malevolent AI, Sim, relentlessly pursues. Tia and her father, Haddon, are descendants of a subterranean city called Heliotrope Es, with inhabitants possessing awe-inspiring abilities. Only by uniting with four other women in her family can Tia unleash her pentata powers and help free humanity from the clutches of the parasitic Sim who has kept them apart. But the story takes a heart-stopping twist. Just moments before old Haddon passes away, a young Haddon travels 50 years into the future to protect Tia. This selfless act sets in motion a series of events that shatter Tia's world, fracturing their reality into two separate timelines. As Tia and young Haddon navigate treacherous terrains across timelines, their journey tests their resilience and family bonds. Humanity's fate hangs in the balance, poised for ascension or annihilation. One reviewer says, there is a metaphysical aspect that makes it so much more than just a good read. Fans of sci-fi fantasy will enjoy it for sure, but readers who seek depth will be thrilled to step out of the mundane and into this fascinating world. If you love rich and fascinating characters and compelling plot lines, this is for you. If you want to listen to a sample of the prologue, just click on the link below. And if you're ready to dive into the world of Heliotropes, get your copy by using the link below or go on Amazon. It's spelled H-E-L-I-O-T-R-O-P-E-Z. Start today exploring this page-turning journey through time and through space. <laughs>